So guys, this is what we're doing today. We're going to replace the wheel cylinder. And brake line from there to here. We already seen the silver. We already did from here. Uh, we already did from here to the fuel filter. I rigged this up so I could spread the, spread the brakes, the shoes, so I can I could get this off. But uh, we are going inside, so I'll, bet I'll be talking about the bolts for this, the hub, and this uh, actual nut. Like I said, this is this is the old wheel cylinder. It still worked, but uh, can you see how dirty all oh, that is? But but anyway, guys, for to do that job, for to take off the, um, uh, I, I had to take the, the brake line anyway. I had to make a new one make a new one I reused this one to the uh, rubber holes for uh, to take off the, um, the wheel cylinder you'll need got the line made up the best I could so you guys probably this is the first time ever making lines for me actually so I, I did the best I could but uh, I just used this here uh, needle nose vice grips I guess um, and put two pieces of nice round tube and I put it to get what put it together and clamp this on there to keep it so that you could bend it half assed keeps it in place if not it's very hard to, for me anyway <laughs> for somebody that's not not knowing what they're doing but um, yeah so I got the new line and we're going to put in the new uh, wheel cylinder. Um, it's so cold outside that uh, I'll just go through the procedure and just tell you it's pretty simple. It's not something you need to be shown. So you um, you just take your wheel cylinder. You'll put in your you can put in your bleeder screw ahead of time. Put in your bleeder screw. There's a, a gasket here with your new one. Don't forget to put the gasket on and make sure it's flat. It's kind of difficult to kind of get it to lay flat at first, but just work at it, you know, get it to lay, lay flat. You got your two bolts here, which I got them out, surprisingly. It took a lot, uh, heating them up and stuff, but they're still sort of good, the, the, the nut on them. Um, that size of nut, is a five sixteenths. Um, you probably use a shallow five sixteenths, and it's hard to get at. If you're just replacing the cylinder and your lines are okay, then you know if you can get these, you'll have to undo the uh, the line anyway. Um, trailing arm or whatever it is. Um, it's in the way so you with the lines on here and the fitting uh, the bleeder screw you can't get in here so if you can take off your line and then you'll get to these a lot better and if you're replacing your line cut the line at the fitting and use a socket to get it out if you can and then you'll be able to to get at these a little better but they're they're five sixteenths and they're small screws or bolts whatever you want to call it so that's that what you'll need for your fittings or what I needed even though it's you know pretty standard 3 16 uh, line uh, a, seven, a 7 16 and a 5 8 for the rubber holes to, to stop the rubber holes from twisting when you're taking off your line and then uh, and the 7 16 worked for the old fitting going into the wheel cylinder but the one that I have putting it back, it's a smaller one. Uh, 
so I'll be using a 3 8 but you'll you'll use what you got to but uh, I am six bolt that holds on the wheel cylinder so it you know you're not going to torque it down and as you've seen there earlier where it fits into the backing plate it's pretty thick so the bolts is not really holding the cylinder with pressure because the cylinder and as you see here the wheel cylinder this here fits into the backing plate the steel backing plate so if whatever twisting there is it's it's being taken by this nub here that fits through the uh, the backing plate if that makes sense those screws really is just keeping this in place it's not really taking much of a, a strain Well, folks, uh, what turned out to be just replacing a piece of brake line um, turns into this and that. Since I've had this open, I figured this here is uh, the adjuster is all, I mean, kaput. It's not working, so I'm going to have to take this apart and uh, and fix this. So what you do is you take off this spring and this spring for this particular thing that's all you need to you could take this off if you wanted but just remember where they go uh this and this well it didn't turn out the way i did or I, wa I wanted it to right here it's all coming off delaminating or glue or whatever is how it's stuck on there so it's coming off both you know both ends so going to have to I'm uh, waiting for the wife to, to bring me, when she gets off work, to bring another set of shoes. So I guess I'll just replace it. Might as well since we're in here. So I'll just uh, put the screws back. I did uh, get this freed up and I cleaned it and put some anti-seize on there. And So that's, this is all ready to go. So. So, so folks, when you get your shoes on... <clears throat> And you uh, go with your adjuster until you get just a little bit of drag on it. That, I could use a little more, but um, there's a bit of a lip and it's hard to get off, so I just go and leave it. Um, so then you can um, put your axle nut on. And for this car, I I got to double check, but I believe it's 185 foot pounds. So uh, I'll go double check and uh, tighten up your axle bolt. And what you want to do is you tighten it up a bit, turn it, tighten it up, turn it, and then you start tightening it. Uh, as you're turning, you tighten it until you get to your your foot pounds whatever it is All right goes to right there and then the new one goes there to the fuel filter which you won't be able to see but uh, goes to the fuel filter so yeah guys also, when you uh, when you put your cap back on, once you get your your nut tightened up, and you put your cap back on, put a bit of grease uh, around the edge. Some people will put like silicone, but yeah, that's that's fine too. Um, even uh, RTV seal it, but I put a bit of grease and straightens it out, tries to make it as round as possible, and then when you put it back, that'll stop any um you know water and 